Okay, let's talk about this little A plus BI and why you must know this for algebra, okay? Well, if you said that uh, A plus BI is a complex number, and I believe that even uh, it's in the title of this video, well, then that's excellent. But if you actually just knew that this is, in fact, a complex number, uh, the form of a complex number, then uh, that's very good. Now, we need to understand why we need complex uh, numbers in algebra. It's extremely important. So if you um, are not familiar with complex numbers, stick around. You'll uh, learn something. This is just going to be an introduction uh, to complex numbers. Uh, there's This is a big topic. So, uh, you know, don't feel like overly intimidated by this word complex. All right. It's not as complicated as it seems, uh, but it, it is extremely important for your success in algebra. So I'm going to get to this uh, basic intro to complex numbers here in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. Uh, you can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But uh, basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, uh, algebra two. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here shortly. Pretty excited about that because I love to teach advanced math. Uh, but I also have a uh, many, many courses in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for the GED, uh, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Acuplacer, Alex exam, CLEP exam, uh, maybe a teacher certification exam, nursing school entrance exam. There's a ton of exams out there that people have to take. And all those exams I mentioned have a lot of math on them. So if you don't do well in the math sections, you don't do well in exams. So let me help you out uh, to study for this. Just go to my website, check out my full course catalog. If I don't have the course that you're studying, drop me a line and I'll give you some guidance on uh, you know, how to study for that particular uh, exam. Um, I also uh, do a lot with independent learners like homeschoolers. I have a great homeschool learning program. And then obviously help those of you that are just having a tough time in your current math courses. Now, uh, the one thing that I cannot do for you is take great math notes. You have to do this for yourself, okay? But this is the secret uh, to really doing well in mathematics. So just over decades of teaching math, I've seen it time and time again. Uh, those students with great math notes almost always have great math grades, and the reverse is true. Those students who were like uh, myself way back in the good old 1980s, that was such a great decade. And guess what? We had a lot of fun, even despite we uh, having no internet, okay? Although technically, I think the internet was uh, developed in the 1980s, but nobody really knew about it. <laughs> but nevertheless, we had a lot of fun. And guess what? When you're having a lot of fun, that means that you are not focused, uh, for the most part, uh, uh, in mathematics, okay? Listen, you know, I, I definitely wasn't paying attention to my algebra teacher in high school, et cetera, et cetera. I had a you know, go into the Marine Corps, learn a little uh, discipline, and then obviously in college, I figured this stuff out. But I'm um, just telling you right now, you got to stay focused, okay, to do well in math. And the one way, the best way to do that is uh, taking uh, great notes, not just some notes, not like just scribble scratch, consistent, great notes. If That's just going to pay off big time. Uh, if you don't do this and you do everything else right, you're still not going to do well. You have to take notes. But um, anyways, improve, obviously, in your note-taking. But as you're doing so, you still need something to study from. So uh, I offer detailed, comprehensive math notes that you can use to include pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and Trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video. All right, so let's talk about this guy right here. Now, this A plus BI, we got to be like, well, what is this? What is a complex number? Now, is a complex number something like uh, this? All right, let's just uh, uh, try to get a nice uh, uh, blank screen here. So what about, uh, let's say I have this. Uh, just making something up. Is this a complex number? Okay, so my question to you, is this a complex number? Now, it looks complicated, okay? It, it's definitely something we can do. We have three divided by one half uh, over four times uh, three minus four sevenths. No, this is not a complex number. This is a complex fraction, okay? And that's a whole nother deal. And um, actually, 
you want to learn how to do a problem like this, just check out my videos in my pre-algebra and algebra playlist. I've done uh, several videos on complex fractions. Uh, so anyways, this is not a complex number. Now, it might look complicated. There's a lot of things that look complicated in mathematics and in algebra, but this is a complex fraction. So if you were thinking, yeah, complex number, I think it's this. No, it's not this. Okay, this is called a complex fraction. Now, let's get into uh, complex numbers. Now, if you have a calculator, a basic scientific calculator, you might even uh, use your cell phone, and hopefully this will work out. Now, of course, here I am telling you, get your cell phone out. Look, I get it. Everyone has a cell phone on them, so let's uh, you know uh, use it for you know, things other than going on your social media. All right, so now I have two uh, prompts here. I have the square root of 4. I want to know what that's equal to, and I want to know what the square root of negative 4 is. So without your calculator first, without your calculator first, go ahead and give me the answers to these things. I'm going to give you exactly uh, four seconds to answer the question, okay, because I don't want you to overthink this. One, two, three, four. Okay, we're done. So how many of you said this is 2 and this is negative 2? Okay, be honest, be honest, all right? I know, I don't know uh, how many views this video is going to get, but uh, typically uh, I'm pretty fortunate. Uh, a lot of my YouTube videos do pretty well. They have some, I have, uh, well, I think my biggest videos on calculus have over 5.2 million views. So pretty happy about that. I have tons of videos with hundreds of thousands of views. So I know there's going to be a lot of people, I think, going to be watching this video. Now, let's say 100,000 people um, have watched this video, I probably think that at least 50% of you out there, um, this was your answer. If you did this, you know, like if you only gave yourself a couple seconds and you instinctively just answer this. Now, logically, okay, this is these are kind of logical answers. And I understand this is wrong, by the way. <laughs> uh, this is incomplete, not right, okay? So, uh, so if you um, answered in this manner, don't feel bad, okay? Because we're gonna talk about why we, why this isn't right and why we need some new numbers uh, to help us out here, okay? Now, let's talk about the square root of four first. What is the square root of four? Now, yes, the square root of four, what does the square root, uh, root mean? Well, it means what number times itself gets us back to a positive four because we're taking the square root of a positive four. So we're trying to find a number such that we multiply it by itself gets back to a positive four. Now, of course, two times two, okay, gets us to a positive four. So the square root of four is in fact two, but it's not the only number, okay? This is halfway done. Is there uh, another number, okay, such that when we multiply by itself, okay, we get back to a positive four? And in fact, there is negative two times negative two. Now, negative times a negative is a positive. So the square root of a positive four is two and negative two, right? Now, most students will be like, oh, the square root of four is two, and they think they're done. No, 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 uh, that you're only halfway done. You gotta give me both um, answers, two and negative two, okay? Because negative two times negative two is also positive four. So over here now, if you're like, okay, the square root of negative four is negative two, well, if that was the case, negative 2 times negative 2 would have to end up being negative 4, and it's not. It's a positive 4. So we have a dilemma, okay? We're like, well, then how do I handle this problem, okay? Uh, I don't know of a number times itself that can get me back to a negative 4 because remember, when um, in algebra, okay, the rules for positive and negative numbers, the signs have to be different. I have to have like a negative two times a positive two or positive two times a negative two to get me back to a negative four, okay? So that's a, that's a problem. We got a situation here, right? Now, if you go into your calculator and you take the square root of negative four, you're probably, your calculator might start shaking or smoking uh, and it might see, you might see this little word like error, that's going to be like, hey, uh, I don't know what you're asking me. Uh, you know, like, I don't understand, okay, because I can't find two numbers. I checked all the numbers such that when I multiply them together, okay, it will give me back to a negative four. So um, this is the scenario, okay? We cannot answer this question 
in terms of what we call real numbers, real numbers. So let's just do uh, something real quick. All right, let's draw a number line right here. And here's zero, here is one, here is two, here is three, negative one, negative two. You probably remember this way back when you were in like in second or oh, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade. Actually, I had number lines in my classroom, even in middle school, etc. But here is the real number line, okay? Real numbers, okay? So now in between here, we have fractions and decimals, but basically we have all the positive numbers here, all the negative numbers here. So your calculator is looking for any number, you know, it's searching negative four to positive four. It's looking in this number system, the real number system, okay? Well, guess what? The answer to this, okay, the square root of negative four is not in the real number system, okay? We're going to have to use a, another number system called the complex number system. And number systems in math are kind of like this, right? So here, uh, here are the real numbers, right here, real numbers, real number system. And that's that number line I just showed you right there. Here's zero, here's one, there's negative one, all that stuff. Here's the real number system. But the real number system is actually a part uh, kind of a sub um, uh, uh, set of a larger system called the complex number system. Okay, and this is this little A plus B I stuff right here. And we're going to need these complex numbers that we're going to have to work in this realm to be able to answer the square root of negative four. Okay, now, uh, so hopefully you can, you know, have a good sense of, oh, okay, this is why we need to understand complex uh, numbers, because uh, if you're solving a quadratic equation, let's say in, in algebra, and you have something like this, x squared is equal to negative 4, well, let's actually do this, x squared is equal to 4, how do I solve for x? I just take the square root of both sides, I get x is equal to the square root of positive 4, so x is equal to positive and negative 2, as we just talked about, but what about an, equ uh, an equation like this? x squared is equal to negative 4. Okay, x squared is equal to negative 4. Let's uh, write this here. If I take the square root of both sides here, I'm going to go in, oh, okay, x is equal to the square root of negative 4. Again, our calculator is going to start smoking and shaking, and we're going to be like, I'm confused. I don't know what to do, because the answer to this is not over here. Okay, it's not in the real numbers. We have to go to the complex number system. This is why you need to understand this for algebra. It's very, very, very important. And there's a lot of uh, there's a lot to learn about complex numbers, but we're just gonna cover the very basics here. So let's get to um, this square root of uh, negative four business. And uh, then I'll show you one other thing and then we'll wrap up this video. Okay, so the square root of negative four. So how can we uh, deal with this problem? Well, this is the way we're going to deal with it. All right, we're going to go, all right, square root. I don't like that negative. So how about we write the square root of negative 4 this way, 4 times negative 1. So the square root of 4 times negative 1, this is 4 times negative 1 is 4. And then uh, if you didn't know, you can break these uh, square root. You can break the square root up into two square roots, the square root of 4 times the square root of negative 1. Okay, you can do that. You kind of pull this apart into two separate things. So the square root of 4 times the square root of negative 1 is the same thing as the square root of 4 times negative 1, which, of course, is the square root of negative 4. So these are all equal. But we want to work over here because now I'm like, oh, okay, hmm. I could take the square root of 4. That is plus and minus 2. And then I got this little, like, square root of negative 1. That's bothering me. Well, what we're going to do in algebra, in mathematics, we're going to say that square root of negative 1, we're going to call you a little imaginary number. It's a little i, okay, and that indicates that we're going to create a complex number. So the square root of negative 1 is equal to i. So now we have the square root of negative 1, and I'm like, okay, you're the same thing as i, an imaginary part, an imaginary component. So the square root of negative 4 is equal to plus and minus. Okay, remember we have both a positive and negative 2, so it's going to be both a plus and minus 2i. And this right here is a complex number. This is an imaginary component to it, but complex numbers, 
as I have here, this a plus bi, this is the form of a complex number. This little bi portion, okay, this is the imaginary part. This is what I, uh, I showed you right here, like uh, 2i plus or minus 2i. That's that part of, a, uh, of an imaginary uh, number. So we have an imaginary part, but we also have a real component to imaginary numbers. So you can have things that look like this, uh, 3 plus 7i. Okay, that's an example of a complex number. This is the real part, and this is the imaginary part. And this entire thing is a complex number. Now, sometimes uh, we just have the imaginary part because the real part is like 0. Like if I have 0 plus 2i, okay, well, we're not going to write the 0 down. We just have 2i. So anyways, I'm kind of digressing. But the form, the general form of a complex number is this a plus bi, something like this. But... Um, I just want you to uh, have a sense of why we need complex numbers. And effectively, if you remember the square root of negative 1 is i and how to use it in this basic example, then you got a very good foundational uh, start to uh, the complex number system, which you absolutely uh, critically need to know because a lot of the problems you're going to be doing algebra Okay, or uh, the solutions are going to be in the complex number system. And um, when I uh, finished up my pre-calculus course, I actually, there's a, quite a bit of um, uh, work in the complex numbers, pretty sophisticated stuff. You can take numbers and you can turn them into different forms, complex numbers into what we call trigonometric or polar forms, and you can do all kinds of crazy stuff. This is very powerful mathematics, okay? But... Uh, you um, are kind of introduced to this in the Algebra 1 level, okay? Uh, but if you continue on learning algebra, you're definitely going to be encountering um, uh, complex numbers, okay? All right, so hopefully uh, this video was interesting and you're like, okay, all right, I learned something. And if that is the case, please consider smashing that like button. That uh, definitely helps me out. And again, if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've uh, been on YouTube for over 10 years. I have over 1,000 videos on my channel basic to advanced math, uh, all there for you. I have tons of videos on complex numbers in my Algebra and Algebra 2 uh, playlist, um, but my best math help will be in my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.